Welcome to Open Relationship Podcast, where we have open and honest conversations as it pertains to the LGBTQ plus community and beyond. I am your host, Solomon E. Stretch. You can follow me on IG at Solomon E. Stretch. And I'm your host, Marco the Prince, and you can follow me on IG at Marco the Prince. And I am your host, Shazam, and you can follow me at underscore kid and play underscore. Look, and we did not fuck that up. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, openers, as you can see, we are, we are a man short today, and so we at Open Relationship Podcast, we would like to extend our condolences to Rodney and his family for the loss of his brother. For those yeah. of you who have been keeping up with us for a while, um, you know that Rodney's brother has been sick, and um, so he has, he has transitioned. And so we... Um, really appreciate y'all being a part of our journey um, as we share our lives and just be as open with you as possible. But again, we we extend our condolences to Rodney and his family. Yes. All right. But, you know, this wouldn't be Open Relationship Podcast <laughs> if we did not get down to business. And since Rodney is not here, <laughs> we're going to have to talk about financials. So, you know, typically Rodney talks about money and he talks about, you know, the church. <laughs> We're going to do something a little different. Mm, oh, Lord. And so we would love for y'all to donate. <laughs> we would. And we will sell pictures of Marco's feet. I said I got cute feet, too. I don't want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got cute feet. So, but you, you heard know. it here first. Marco is down for it. So if I you would. are looking to donate to Open Relationship Podcast, we will send you pictures of Marco's feet. Yes, He'll even will. sign it with his feet. Mm. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Can be like a print. You know how like children, when they're first born, yes. they give an imprint. In, in, in the those. corner. Yeah. That would be cute. <laughs> Go ahead and donate. You never know what's coming your way. Oh, How was Lord. your week, Shazam? <laughs> My week was good. Um, I have no. I'm try, I'm in a season. That I'm not trying to complain. Okay. You know, there are so Ooh, many things nice. that. I was talking to a friend this morning, and I was just saying there's so many things that are in our control. We don't realize how much power we have within ourselves to control our days, to control our weeks, our energies, our moods, our attitudes, all that. So I've just been a. Uh, like very just grateful and like gratitude and just not complaining. Like literally just letting everything just roll off my back. Like if something happens, I'd be like, whatever. Ain't nothing bad happen. And I've really been focusing on not being in knee jerk mode. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like so many of us walk around and we're waiting for something to happen bad. Like we're waiting for somebody to pull the rug from underneath us. Mm -hmm. So I've really been focusing on just like enjoying the now. You know okay. what I mean? And not being in knee jerk mode. How was your week? My week was good. Um, went to my therapist again. Um, I don't know if it's gonna work. I was just about um, to ask you. Not because he's not a good therapist, um, but just because I think he's just a little bit too young for my liking. And then he doesn't ask enough challenging questions for me. It feels like I'm talking to you like- You just met him. I know, but I'm giving it, so normally I give it, <laughs> so normally I give it three like meetings. So I'm gonna, I up You know to he five. likes to give timelines on okay. dating. So I'm gonna so. give it up to five. Like there's a lot of dead air in our like sessions. And that is like silence? Me, yeah. Ooh. And it doesn't make me feel good. Therapy costs too much for but, that. Thank you. <laughs> so it could be good, it could be bad. Um, and then also on Sunday, um, I'm gonna pat myself on the back. I got all my family on a Zoom call. The kids, my sisters, my mom, and we had a family group chat for a whole hour and talked about next year of like uh, planning a family vacation and like doing more things together. So okay. it was, and I was the facilitator, so I felt accomplished. That's good, I like that. Yes. Nice I think it's time for like, like our generation, we have to like grab the reins from them old folks and be like, listen, sitting in the backyard and, and it's hot and barbecue, I don't wanna do that no more. Right. How was your week, Solomon? It's been, it's been a good week. It's getting cold. Oh, and like, Buddha, Buddha. I know. Right? And gray sweatpants <laughs> season two. You and these gray. You've been talking about this for oh. weeks. <laughs> I love gray sweatpants. You're, you're nasty. <laughs> I never said I wasn't. Well, that is true. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, the weather's getting colder, <laughs> and I'm preparing for that. Um, With a man or by yourself? Mm. By myself right now. 
Um, well, just a few weeks ago, you said you was on track for cuffing season. Ooh, What's going uh, on? Uh, mm. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Not the little rumble with the B. Um, oh. Mm. oh, okay. I guess we're all set to that. Mm. All right. But anyway, <laughs> what we got, Marco? Um, yeah, so, you know, we're about to get into the streets, but you know we also got to pay these bills. Um as you know, openers, if you don't know now, you know that Apple is our official sponsor for Open Relationship Podcast. In the description box below, you can get one month of Apple TV or one month of Apple Music, courteous of us. And also, if you haven't done so or if you don't know, um, we finally have an online store where you can buy merch. Um, yeah, so support us. And as always, everything is greatly appreciated. And so we're we got some drink in our cup. Um, <laughs> not, you, not you telling our business. Well, it says drink of the week, flavor of the week. We asked for sparkling water, but Solomon came in here toting the whole bar in his bag. We got a little um, little crown apple um, peach with peach juice in it. So this is gonna be a good episode. Um, but let's get into these topics. Um, Y'all, before- Solomon laid the bottles around the collection plate. I'm gonna tell on him. They was a lot. I walked in the room and they was around the collection plate. I don't know what was going on. Even the producer guys. Ooh. <laughs> Production is even going up, y'all. Oh, so if the video, if it's up, then it's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> I feel attacked. Um, oh, thank but, you. Thank you. <laughs> but before we move further, you know, I forgot the um, how you can further support us. You can further support us oh. by going to our YouTube, liking, yes. commenting, and subscribing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we really do appreciate all the support you guys are giving us, and we love the fact that you are leaving very detailed comments. And um, at some point, <laughs> we're going to get around to uh, to replying to all of them. Um, but you guys, you, look, y'all are insightful. Y'all be coming yes. for us? I was mm. going to say, y'all don't take it easy. Y'all be laying it on thick. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> y'all be typing. I'll be reading them comments screaming. <laughs> right. Um, continue to let Rodney have it, though. Um, and, <laughs> and we look to hear more from you in the future. Yes, now time for the streets. Um, so we're going to take it over to California. Um, I found this very interesting. As you guys know, I'm trying to tiptoe into politics since it is um, election year next year. Um, California passed a new law slash bill um, on October 11th called the Ebony Alert. Um, I thought that was phenomenal. It gave me a new step in the right direction. Um, it doesn't take effect till January 1st, but the idea behind it is to excuse me, um, find more black and brown children between the ages of 12 to 25. If you don't know, there was 546,568, wait, no, I can't talk. You're right. Oh. (laughs) Um, Children missing, 39% was minority last year in 2022, and I got that information from the Black and Missing Foundation, if you want to cite my sources. Um, (laughs) um, And that's a high-ass number. Um, I just remember when the um, pandemic was happening when all the kids was missing around the D.C. area and in mm-hmm. Ohio. So when I was reading this, I was like, you know what? This is one step closer to greatness. So hopefully this law goes across all of the United States um, in every state, um, but we can only wish for the best. Now, I had a discussion with somebody this weekend. We had a heated debate about this, and... <clears throat> This person is well-versed in politics. They're mm-hmm. really good at what they do. And I was objecting to this. I was like, I don't like this. Reason being, I think that in a progressive area like California, mm-hmm. this might be kind of cute. But if you get to like somewhere where it's not as progressive, for example, I'm from Indiana. This in Indiana to me is a problem. Mm-hmm. Reason being, they already don't care about black children. There's a lot of them missing. So now we're going to separate whether the kid is black or white when they go missing. Mm-hmm. And we're going to signal, this is an empty alert. This is an Amber alert. In, in my opinion, it looks like segregation again. It's like, mm-hmm. okay, we're going to flag y'all when it's a black kid missing. So y'all, if you really don't give a fuck, now you really don't have to pay attention because it's an ebony alert. But if it's Amber alert, you might jump because I- Amber's missing and not ebony. I did not think about it like that. Yeah, good... this person that I was having a conversation <laughs> with kind of like, they had a rebuttal to it, and I won't go into it. But it was just like, 
to me, it was just like, it, is this progressive or is this like a step in the wrong direction to really allow people to ignore black and brown children missing again, as they've been doing for years? Hmm. I'm going to split the fence or what is it? Split the pole? What's the saying? Get split. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> the splitting? Do a split? Uh, um, on the... And see, I was going to say ride the middle, but then that doesn't even, <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't even fit. But so I can, I can see both sides of the fence mm -hmm. where I definitely, I definitely understand where you're coming from. And at the same time, um, historically, there is little visibility when it comes to black children, people of color who or children of color who go missing or mm -hmm. people of color and, and black people who go missing. Um, and so this will shed some light on on that. Um, and at the same time, I, I definitely get your point. Like, I, I believe we're segregating the mm -hmm. the black people who are missing versus the white people who are missing. Um, and so I don't know. I'm glad people are thinking about it, though. I am, too. I'm glad they're having a conversation. I will eat my words if in like. Three after a quarter one, they show like the numbers are reducing and like they're down. actually finding like it's actually helping. If it's not helping, I don't know if it's a part of the. Pro I don't know if it's a, like adding to the problem in my mind. That's a good point. I, I like the points that you guys has brought because I didn't think of it like that. I just thought <laughs> of you know living in D.C. of all these kids always mm -hmm. missing and like they find in black and brown children in random places. I'm like, well, where was the alerts and where was the they're on the posters at Walmart. The and I'm not, being, I'm, no, not no, being, no. I'm not being shady, but I, I, you go to Walmart mm -hmm. and you see the, the pictures plastered everywhere, but mm -hmm. then you're just like, where was the Amber Alert for these kids? Yeah. And Walmart's not even 24 hours no more. They close at nine. So. I used to have fun in Walmart in 24 hours. So yeah, bring them back. Okay. <laughs> Um, move. Do, I, do I want to probe that a little bit? <laughs> what, 24 what kind hour Walmarts? Of, what kind of fun were you having at Walmart? So, me and hours? one of my exes, so... He, wait a minute. <laughs> no, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. No, like, wait, this wait. was like year... This is probably like seven, eight years ago. It don't matter what the year was, baby. What was you doing? We used to go grocery shopping. And he worked overnight. Well, he worked at a hotel, so he wouldn't get off until like 3 a.m. So, he'd be like, oh, I'm home. And bro. that's why you want 24-hour Walmarts back? I... Well, one, there's nobody in Walmarts. So we can do all of our grocery shopping in peace. Y'all ain't got Tommy, Catch Jim. Catch the tea openers, grocery shopping. <laughs> <laughs> I liked Walmart, and I ain't got to explain myself. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. Did you guys know Madonna started a tour? <laughs> now she tried to jump topics. <laughs> <laughs> Rodney not here to have your back, so now right. you're scared. <laughs> They're going to eat me alive over this. Uh, no, I just realized like Madonna is starting her celebration tour. Um, I saw some clips in the Twitter threads, and her daughter was voguing. And you know, now the thing is, oh, Blue Ivy, not versus, but you know, like Blue, Blue Ivy set the tone. So now I feel like all their kids are stepping on stage and like showing their talent. I thought it was beautiful. Um, another tour celebrating LGBTQ plus community. Um, there's some fine men that I've seen in some of those clips. And they was taking their pants off. Yeah, they had jock straps and thongs and everything on. I'm, yes, Lord. I saw a little hole, too. I was like... This I didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this concert is not for kids. But, um, the yeah. last one wasn't either. Huh? I don't think any of wasn't either. I think Beyonce was actually for the kids, but I don't think the people when they showed up, like, <laughs> we were seeing booty holes and assless chats and stuff at Renaissance. I didn't see that at Renaissance. I saw everybody fully dressed. Baby, you must have been a little too lit because I'm going to tell I you. Mean, potentially. There was but... assless chaps, coochies was hanging out, all that at Renaissance. Like, this is a, like, this is a, kids are here. <laughs> but at the same time, I wouldn't take my nephews to anything like that. Or if I had children, I wouldn't take them to nothing like that. I don't know. I just I just enjoy like like I seen the um clip from Kevin, the um the person that does um cozy intro. Mm -hmm. Um y'all y'all know the saying, I ain't gotta do it. But um just going through and like giving his flowers to Beyonce and creating a safe space for us and just celebrating our community. So um I saw the clip of the Madonna thing and I was excited because um the drag queen Bob 
Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah. He like did the intro to Vogue, and he was dressed like very like Bridgington. Like it was big hair, fans, and like it was amazing. It was very dramatic, mm-hmm. and he like kicked off the show. So when the show started, he was like in the audience, and he like started coughing on the mic, and was like, "It's showtime," and you know the gays are gonna carry. Mm-hmm. And he like carried all across the bot, like on the floor, got up on the stage, and like that's how the show started. <laughs> oh wow! That it made dope. me like, damn, am I finna buy a ticket to go no, see Madonna's own ass? Definitely. I was googling. When she coming? She coming to State Farm? Um, I didn't. She's going first. to State Farm. Yeah, not Mercedes. Mm-hmm. Hmm, clock that T. Mm. Oh. Every, every girl can't uh, sell out Mercedes Benz for three nights in a row. At the same time, though, you have to be very <laughs> cautious because <laughs> she she can sell out State Farm mm-hmm. really fast. If she went in Mercedes, it could be a hit or miss, mm-hmm. and now you got empty seats places. Yeah, I might have to go see Madonna. I'm up for it. Yes, you uh, haven't seen you know, her before. So what? You haven't seen her before. Like in concert? Yeah. No. no. Me neither. Yeah. I've seen her on Super Bowl. Um, but... but Madonna's an icon. And so what I really love about this entire genre is the celebration of the LGBTQ plus community. Mm-hmm. Um, and just the visibility that the yeah. LGBTQ plus community has right now. Um, and we're seeing so many people in like a different light. I love that. Absolutely love that. I'm going to look for tickets. I'm going to send them to y'all. I'm excited because the little girl's Vogan was great, and that was opening show. So we saw how Blue looked at opening, and by the end, when Blue was eating them up, so I'm sure her Vogan just gonna get better and better and better and better. Getting it. What? By the end, she listen. There was one clip where she was going, and I think Beyonce looked and was like, "Bitch, what are you doing?" Because she was off on Beyonce, and Beyonce started messing up the dance moves and stuff. I'm like, "Yeah, she took off on you, Beyonce. And you you missed it, girl. <laughs> you created her, though. Listen." Uh-oh. And then uh, also in the streets, Shonda Rhimes is producing a Black Barbie documentary movie um, celebrating the first Black Barbie and all the controversy behind it. Um, it's getting released in on Netflix, excuse me. They don't have a release date, but some of the topics of conversations will be... Sorry, I'm burping. I'm acting like uh, yep. my counterpartner over here. Girl. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all the process that happened and why Barbie cannot have her own movie. And um, for anybody that has seen Barbie, when y'all showed up to the theaters and all y'all pinks and did drag con and all that, support this movie like y'all did that. Because this is basically telling the story behind the Black Barbie. Shout out to Issa Rae for being the Black Barbie in the Barbie movie. Um but I'm interested to see like what the conversations was behind at Mattel of why they went that direction. So it looks like it, this film did already premiere at um, Austin South, South. What is it? Southeast Southwest. You guys know what I'm talking about? It's like an Austin festival. Mm-hmm. It premiered there already until in this year. So that's when it got picked up by Netflix. But I'm excited too. I think it's going to be very interesting, and I'm gonna I'm excited to see what the counterparts have to say because when homegirl was the mermaid they just thought there couldn't be a black mermaid so i don't know how they're going to feel about hearing about the black barbie but i'm sure there's going to be a lot of controversy and i'm sure there were a lot of issues when they went to go put out a black barbie yes i'm sure um but you know (laughs) and then last but not least we just have a um, hot off the press um sexy red is went to instagram and pronounced announced that she was pregnant by an NBA young boy. Um, Wait, she said it was him? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she took it to Instagram. Girl, I've been working today. I didn't get to look. Um, I hope you are safe. Delivery. Um, but he has like 11 children. And he's only 23. But we'll get into that uh, on another episode. Just... Sexy Red, have a safe and healthy pregnancy. I wish the best for you. I did not know that. Like, I'm really interested. I knew she was pregnant, but I didn't know that it was... I didn't know she said it was him. Mm -hmm. Um, They've been tearing my girl Sexy Red up on Instagram and Twitter. I like Sexy Red a lot. I think she speaks to my inner ratchet. I think that she is... (laughs) She's just fun. Mm -hmm. She's fun to watch. Like, she's fun to interact and, like... She just seems like she's very down to earth and she's funny. And yeah, I just, I hope my girl can recover and I hope she has longevity because I don't know how much longer we can listen to black booty hoes and pink coochies and make it breathe and shake and all that. Cause it's, you gotta change it up eventually. Mm-hmm. 
that's a message for the city girls too. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you on one today. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we could talk about that. So they're releasing a new album called Raw, right? And it's called like I think Real Ass Whores is what it stands for. Carisha I'm pretty sure. And JT? Yes. Let me double check. I don't want to misquote, misquote, excuse me. Yeah. <clears throat> they're releasing an album on Friday called Raw and it's Real Ass Whores. Do they have a single out? Uh, who do y'all Real ass horse. I I only made it halfway through their last album. Um The one with Pussy Talk with Doja Cat. Um yeah, it's only a few songs on there, so I didn't I didn't think that they would make it to another album, but I wish best for their success. I like them individually. I think JT can rap and I think Carisha's doing her thing independently, but the music just ain't music in for me. I just think eventually you have to develop as an artist. Mm -hmm. And we don't see that in the new generation of artists. We see it in some people, but not. it's not like the masses. They're not, they're not maturing. Like, when are y'all going to stop rapping about being whores or your pussy? Mm -hmm. But that's catchy. Yeah. For how long? Oh, no, I'm playing devil's advocate. I don't oh. listen to that shit. <laughs> 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 I'm, just, I'm just trying to contribute to the conversation. Somebody tweeted, I forgot who it was that tweeted it, but they were just saying, like, so y'all going, like, they had a promo video and they were like, if y'all want to hear some, like, some scamming shit, some pussy shit, some get money shit, like, that's all they were talking about. And everybody's just like, so w when is there something new? Now, Megan's about to drop Act One, but we'll, we'll, we'll save that for later because I'm sure she's going to tear everybody up. Mm -hmm. And Shazam, you can take it away. All right, so situations with Shazam, it's always going to be something we've all experienced, something we all can relate to, and it's going to be named after a song. Today, since we are going to be celebrating Halloween, and y'all have seen the Mean Girls clip where it's like, this is when the girls can be sexy and all that kind of stuff, that's how the gays carry. <laughs> so I put on Spell on You, Nina Simone. Most people mm -hmm. recognize this song from Hocus Pocus with Bette Midler singing like the country version, but if you have not checked out Nina Simone's version, listen to it. It's very much so, it's very much darker Mm -hmm. And it sounds very, it sounds more spooky. Mm -hmm. It's not so happy, you know? So if I could pick her brain, I would like to know, like, what were you actually thinking when you sang that song? Because she, you feel something there. So Halloween amongst the gays. Y'all participate in Halloween? Don't be so quiet. Recently. <laughs> Recently. <laughs> Did y'all participate in Halloween growing up? Um, Kind of, sort of, like, um, when we were, like, school-age kids, mm -hmm. like little kids. Um, we did it as like to participate with the other kids, but then as we got older, it wasn't really a, a thing. Okay, it wasn't a thing for me because I don't like being scared and I don't like blood, rats, skeletons, any of that. So I'm a I'm a scary cat. So. But now that you're older, you can be naked on Halloween. You participate. Mm -hmm. Got Wait, it. Say that again. Now that he's older, and he can be naked on Halloween. He participates. Uh, okay. He ain't got to be scared. Indeed. He can be a whore. Mm -hmm. Real ass horse. <laughs> <laughs> I participated in Halloween growing up, but like we had like this thing at church. It wasn't Halloween. It was called a Halloween a Hallelujah party, and it was like at church in like the Family Life Center, which is equivalent to like a gym slash mm -hmm. performance area. Mm -hmm. Anyways, and we like would dress up as like people from the Bible. Like I remember my mom putting a sheet on me, and like I looked like a whole shepherd boy or whatever. I was like, David or somebody. I'm like, Mom, no, I want to be Scream. No, you're going to be a shepherd. So, Mom, we'll discuss that later. But what's your fondest memory of Halloween? It can be something that you've done when you've been older and you were of age and had some beverages and had a thong on. Or it can be when you were asking trick or treat and asking for candy. Or if you were giving out the candy. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of everything. So <laughs> trick or treat. Mine would be last year. As an adult, um, I went to a Deviant event. <laughs> what event? Deviant. Oh, okay. It was my first Deviant event, I think. Yeah, it was my first Deviant event. Um, and I dressed up. Mm. And I had a date. And they led me around on a collar. Well, that was a plot twist. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't on my bingo card for tonight. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Wait, <laughs> they led you around on a collar. Yeah, he was the pilot. Were you on all fours? No. no. Oh. No. Did you take a picture on all fours before you left the house? No. Was he a fireman? 
No. Oh. No, because firemen, dogs. No, I think it was more like submissive, dominatrix. Well, I know that, that but kinda. you... Um, a Dalmatian? Like, no. You, y'all get what I'm saying. Mm. So what were you, Solomon? <laughs> Tell the people. We're confused. We need clarity. What'd you have on? Leather. Mm. What else? Lace. Ooh. Mm. Leather and Netting. Lace. Ooh, and nets. A mask. Oh. Definitely uh, a mask. Mask. <laughs> 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 um... My this is my we have a similar one but oh. not the same. Um, so this is so last year was my second time participating in Halloween as an adult. So I too was introduced to a deviant party on Halloween, um, and I went to the one here in Atlanta. Um, <laughs> I had um, assless chaps on, so I was a cowboy. Um, yeah, it was. It was nice. I went with my homeboy. He introduced me to it, but yeah. There was a tweet last year after the Deviant Party. Somebody said something like, when did Woody start wearing assless chaps? Because <laughs> <laughs> it was like a whole thread about how the gays were like demonizing Disney characters. <laughs> I too wore assless chaps like a few years ago. I was um, So it was when Corella first came out mm-hmm. and I like had painted my face and it said the future and then instead of wearing like all leather pants, I'm gay. So I wore like leather chaps with like fishnet and like a gold thong and it like sparkled and it was a lot. Anyways, <laughs> so you all mentioned that you started participating in Halloween you when you were younger. Mm-hmm. When did it, like, finally click, like, oh, this is when I should start, like, like, when was the first time that you was like, okay, Halloween's not about being scary. It's actually where I can be a little bit free. Mm. Last year. And, yeah. Last year. No, we were at the same event. We were. I did. Did you see Solomon? No, he did no, not. No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> nobody no. was. Nobody would be able to say they saw Solomon. Um, no, I didn't, and I didn't know anybody there. So this is like, so that was my first official year here in Atlanta. So I did you go still, in the dark room? Mind your business. That's a yes. <laughs> um, but I did go to New York as like Tarzan before. But then I left early because it was too fucking cold and it started snowing in New York. And all I had was like a fur vest on with like a fur skirt with some fur boots. And I was like, yeah, I'm not doing this. I went to L.A. as Tarzan once. And I literally like, I had on, uh, it was like a fur skirt, but the sides were out. Mm -hmm. And funny story. So me and my friend, we're in L.A. I've never been to L.A. for Halloween. You know, L.A. used to have like this big festival in WeHo where like the streets are covered and Mm -hmm. everybody's in costumes. So we had like... Being, like, young and trying to stunt, we had, like, rented this big Audi truck. And we were like, oh, we're going to have a great time. And we are like, oh, we're going to valet at the club or whatever. So we pull up to valet. Mind you, this skirt doesn't have draws in it. So I have put on a thong underneath, like, it'll hold me together. I'll be fine. Bitch, I open the door, threw my leg out, balls and dick fall out <laughs> of the damn skirt as I'm getting out the car. I screamed because everybody's in line and they're like <gasps> and i'm like oh my god like get me inside <laughs> so now everybody has seen my balls dick and my ass cheeks is already out but <laughs> lord jesus <laughs> traumatized mm. did get some free drinks though because uh, it looked good okay he was manscaped <laughs> <laughs> so following do you guys think like this year with your plans whatever you'll be doing are you going for more scary sexy or creative i haven't decided yet so last year you said you were in lace, leather, mesh, mask. And a leash. And, oh, <laughs> and a leash. <laughs> and you were in assless chaps as a cowboy. Mm. Okay, last year I was a, a botched body. Oh. Yeah, I was like wrapped in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, like had, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a botched body. So I think this year I'm going to go more like the creative route. I think I'm actually going to like have on clothes this year and gag the people. Because everybody's expecting folks to be naked. So I think I'm going to go creative. Don't know what yet, but what do you guys think? Will we have, be at a poster? I have costumes? two. Oh. So I have scary and then I have sexy and I could merge them together. But I'm this weekend is like trial weekend to put everything together to see how I want to look for next weekend. Can the people look for you at the next deviant party? No. Mm. <laughs> You're not going? No. Oh. I mean, I might tiptoe through, but... See how that answer changed? Mm. <laughs> <But> <laughs> Solomon, what are you thinking? I don't know. Um, 
I might do the sexy thing. Okay. Um, we'll see. Hmm. Y'all being coy today. It's okay. No, not, not really. Like, I really haven't decided. Um, I want to do something. I know that. And so I just don't know what I want to do and how I want to do it. Mm. Hmm. Same. I haven't really decided what I'm going to wear, but I think it's going to be something very creative. I don't want to be naked. It's a little cold outside. I was like, it's yeah, it is a little too cold. So do y'all think, last question, do y'all think the gays go too far for Halloween? Mm. We've seen some wild costumes. And they've already started. People have started celebrating Halloween already. I love it. I like uh, the creativity behind it. Um, go too far with the nakedness. Um, no, because women can do it. Women be out here in short mini skirts, being a nurse, and thigh high boots, and women can do it. Gays can do it. What you think, Solomon? Um, I don't think the gays go too far. Mm-hmm. Um, and as you were asking the question, like I blinked out and went somewhere else. Um, Ooh, back like, to the leash. No, not back on the leash, but like <laughs> I was thinking of like a like a photo shoot, like a Halloween photo shoot. Mm-hmm. Like I would love to be like a, a Pooh Bear. Mm. And like a little red crop, no it's pants. It's actually a girl. Mm. And then like a, a honey pot, like covering up all the parts. Wouldn't that be cute? Oh, that'd be cute. You and your man? Future man? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just a solo dolo. Yeah, I don't think the guys go too far. I love it when they can be free and express themselves. And I feel like a lot of people didn't celebrate. <laughs> Put a bow on this because this is going. <laughs> I'm like a lot of people don't get to like feel free a lot. Mm-hmm. So when there's an opportunity to be, be free and be creative, and like maybe during the day you're an attorney, but tomorrow night you're gonna be a dominatrix for a night. <laughs> like yes, so I encourage all the gays like tap into your inner creativity, be sexy, be who you are, mm-hmm. and have fun on Halloween. Be safe. Release call Uber, wiggle. y'all. Yeah, call. Wear Uber, condoms, please. that kind of stuff. Hold that, <laughs> Solomon. <laughs> Before we get into the menage a trois, here at Open Relationship Podcast, we are all about community, safe spaces, and open-ended conversations where we can all agree or disagree and still be heard. We will have live shows via YouTube, merch, which is already here, and giveaways. So click the link below so you can be part of the chat. We hope to see you there. All right. And so for today's menage a trois, you know, uh, we have been talking a lot about... um, getting ready being ready getting ready to be ready Mm -hmm. in terms of not not that but in terms of like relationships right because you you brought up cuffing season and we've been talking about cuffing season and we've been talking about like Mm self-awareness and so the question for the menage a trois today is like what are your toxic traits so you know as we're getting colder mm-hmm. and closer like what have been some of the things when you look back at some of your old relationships like what have been some of the um maybe the commentary that you received that doesn't quite mesh so well with other people for me <laughs> take your sip um so for me um i think the commentary is that i can be a little too nonchalant um, so like I could absolutely love you, adore you, and then sometimes you would not know it mm. or feel it. Um, in the words of my good sis Phaedra Parks, I'm the nicest person you'll ever meet. I'm like an angel dipped in chocolate. I do not have any toxic traits. Next question. Lies. <laughs> Lies. Jk. Um, I would say the previous feedback that I've received is that um, I can be nonchalant. I am very much so. I don't want to argue. Like okay. You got it. Let, let's 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 keep it moving. Are you hungry? Like <laughs> that's my answer. <laughs> um, I'm hungry. Let's, let's go get food. Um, I would also say that one of my toxic traits is that sometimes I don't have, I don't have awareness of time, mm-hmm. and sometimes mm-hmm. that can be that can affect other people because I will be late, I will sleep longer, like and be like, oh, like we were supposed to do this. I'm running thirty minutes late. Some people don't like that. Like you're running late, and they be like that shows that you don't value me or you don't value my mm-hmm. time. And lastly, I will say that I've always had a struggle, which I'm doing better now, with balancing my relationships with my friendships. And I've kind of discussed this before. It's like I 
I have to learn how to do that. That can be toxic for some people because it's like, why do your friends always come before me? Or why, do, you know what I mean? So I'm learning to balance that still to this day. It's hard for me, but that's what I'll say my toxic traits are. My toxic trait is, um, <laughs> I actually previously got this feedback. Um, I'm a little self-centered. I think everything revolves around me. Um, sometimes I care, sometimes I don't. Um, and if we're not like talking about me like or anything that has to do with me, like I just kind of don't care. I am working on it. That's what therapy is for. Um, I don't think it's a bad trait to have um, because I matter too. Um, but I can see how others... <laughs> I can see how others, um, you know, can feel when I don't care about them. Well, I, I think the thing is that they matter, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I, I can said be self, I'm working on it. I can be self-centered, but I matter, too. What I do, hell? but, like, <laughs> just, like, so, for example, like, what she said, like, when it comes to arguments. Like, so, I don't like arguing. I don't like going back and forth for things. So, I'm very much so, okay, but my, this is my opinion. That's yours. We can go eat. And but, like, but you need to listen to me. I, I did, and right now I just don't want to argue. We don't have to have this conversation. We can have this conversation in a few days. It's too fresh on the table for me, so we can pick it up where we left off in a few days, or we can just sweep it under the rug and learn from it. What's worked for me with that is, like, you have to have, like, actionable items to walk away from the discussion with, although it's, like, old me will be like, okay, like, w let's go eat. But you have to, like, walk through that. Because if you don't walk through that three days later, it's like, okay, now you didn't work me, bitch, and we got a problem. You know what I mean? I don't think it's ignoring. I don't like talking about, okay, three days. No, I'm going to stand by what I said. Like three days, like I don't want to talk about something in the moment because it's too fresh. I'm angry. I'm frustrated. But I still want to enjoy your company. I still want to be around you. But like we're both angry. I'm not about to do the arguing back and forth and like make a scene because then I'm just going to get more angry. Let's let it die down again and then we can come back. So I know we're not on the best of terms right now, but... So on Monday, we had this disagreement. So this is where I was coming from. Where were you coming from? And like, let's have a civilized conversation. I'm very big on not, like, let's communicate to understand versus communicate just to talk. And when I'm angry, I feel like the other person is communicating just to talk and we're not getting anywhere. Before. Even though they may not be feeling that way, like they may be getting somewhere because you feel that way mm -hmm. because you're self-centered, you want to shut the conversation down. But <laughs> even when I sit here and they're like, yeah, but yada, 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 I'm like, okay, I'm listening, I'm listening. They're still angry because I'm not responding. I don't want to respond right now. Because well, it's about you. Because how I'm going to respond is not going to be good for you. I need time to dissect it. I want to process everything that has happened. And we can talk about it when I'm not frustrated or angry anymore. But why are you angry? Depending on depending on the argument or discussion. But because it's all about how you feel, you shut the conversation down and talk about it later rather than having a discussion it's, when they want to talk like about it. It's more like a pause. Like, I'm not shutting it down. I need just time to dissect about everything. And so this isn't me saying that you're wrong. I'm, oh, no, no, no. Like, I'm actually just loving I, I this hear this all the time. I'm like, loving this interrogation. Because um, <laughs> I don't like it. Because you, you are like not. You're not having it. Uh, so my thing is, um, I get where you're coming from. Mm -hmm. I think I'm kind of the same way. Like, I don't want to talk about it right now. But I have also been blessed with individuals in my life who will be like, but we are. We are going to talk about this right now. I want to know why you're angry. I want to know why you're whatever. Mm -hmm. um, or I want to know why you aren't angry. I want to know why you aren't responsive. Um, like, I'm fired up, and I want to know why you don't care that I'm fired up. And it's like, and for me, it's, it's not that I don't care that you're fired up. <laughs> this is going to sound horrible. In the back of my mind, it's amusing that you're fired up. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> <laughs> well, mine's just as bad because if somebody tell me I got to talk about it now, my coochie's wet and I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> mm -mm. <laughs> like, okay, we can talk about it, but after we talk about it, let's let's make a trip somewhere before we go get food. Whatever we go to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be like, to be fair, like I've never had. Look. <laughs> That might be a toxic trait. I would have sex <laughs> after our argument. Yeah, no. I, I'm probably sleeping in the other room. But like to fair, to be fair, I've never had an individual like approach me like that. So I understand that you're angry, but we can talk about it. But why are you angry? Why aren't you responsive? Why don't you want to talk about it right now? I'll be open to that, but it just it just never happened. 
it always turns into an argument or something, and then I tend to walk away, sleep in another room, or just go back to my house and, okay, we'll talk about it when I want to talk about it, or in three days. Three days is my max. Have you ever voiced to someone, like, that you would appreciate or, like, you never experienced that so that they would do it? Like the current man you're talking to. Have you voiced this to him? We, we, <laughs> yes, we, we're getting confirmation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't been in, like, a disagreement or, like, argument or anything where we're debating. Like, How new is it? Mm, what month is October? Probably, like, May-ish. Damn. So, so it was, like, fairly new. Am I going to be a bridesmaid? Wait a minute. Are you talking about six months, right? Who? Six months, All right. Man. <laughs> that, yeah, that's a long time. No agreements. Well, we haven't, like, no disagreements. That's good. I think we're very, like, much so, like, okay, this is what you want to do. Okay. So, like, we we take turns. Like, okay, so you don't want to do this. And he's very open. Like, there's nothing ever, like, on the table where I feel like I have to argue or voice my opinion and vice versa. Like, okay, so we can do it another time. I love this for you. Yeah, I, I really hate arguing. So, like, if when me and one of my friends got into it, I literally walked away. Like, not from the friendship, but I was like, I don't want to do this right now. I'm walking away. Where are you going? Where are you going? I need time. Please don't try to get it out of me. I just need to calm down. I need to breathe. I need to calm my nerves. I'm not arguing because I know where it can go, and I'm not trying to go there. Understood. Pisces or Cancer? I'm a Cancer. He's a Cancer. Yes, a cancer. Oh, you're an Aries. So, yeah. Child of Cancer. Lord Jesus. Because when I, remember it was when I snap, it's not it's not good for anybody, as mentioned before on this show. I won't drag Cancers today, but go ahead, Solomon. <laughs> no, so, and so the thing, like, I'm, I'm the type of person, that, like, I'll shut down. Mm-hmm. And I know it's not healthy, and it's something that I've also been working on. Um, and so in working on it, like there's this conscious effort to I can shut down for anything. Like, you know, we've we've been having conversations on air, off air about how life has just been lifing. Mm-hmm. And with life going the way that it life has been going for the past month or so, um, like I'll I'll just be at the house. Like I'm on the couch, I'm zoned out, I'm I'm binging something on TV and it is what it is. Um and as much as I say, like, on this show, like, oh, I want to be married. No, I don't go out. Well, girl, how are you going to meet your man? Exactly. <laughs> Talk to him. <laughs> right? Talk to you to my damn self. <laughs> Self-sabotage. Oh. <laughs> and so, like, I... I... <laughs> There, like, there's an Instagram post that talks about this where it's like, girl, how you how, you want to be married, but you'll never leave your house. So you always got your body on, bitch. How you gonna meet your man? And that's why I'm laughing because how you gonna meet your man if you're not leaving the house? You think he gonna walk into the job? He put the bonnet on. You think he gonna be standing outside the studio when you leave? Hopefully, he be at Publix. <laughs> <laughs> Publix, Publix, or, or, or Fresh Market. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but the thing is, like, um, I don't necessarily need a reason to shut down. Mm-hmm. Um, life will do what life does, and so even when I'm in a relationship, like I can, and even in friendships, like mm-hmm. I can see someone today and then not see you again for like six months. Mm-hmm. Um, now, in a relationship, I I don't think I could go that long. Um, but then I do have these, opp- I have these moments, I don't want to call them opportunities, but I have these moments where I go silent. Um, and it has recently been addressed to me and someone that I used to talk to, an ex, was like, I'm still trying to figure out what to do when you don't talk. And I'm just like, you're the first person to actually ever say that to me, so mm. I don't know that it actually happens so when we're not aware of some of our traits then what that's difficult but self-awareness is everything i think this is why it's important to have a good relationship with well you have to have good friendships Mm -hmm. because a lot of times the toxic traits that we display in a relationship our friends have already seen them and when you go to your friends and be like this nigga and they be like what did you do? Because you probably did this. You know what I mean? Because they know what we're going to do. They know we are creatures of habits. They know us, and they know our toxic traits. Like, one of my best friends, she will tell me all the time, 
you you finna self sabotage yourself. Mm. Yeah, you finna self sabotage. Stop talking like that. You finna self sabotage because she knows that's what I've done historically. You know what I mean? So I think it's important to be tied in with people who know you platonically, not like relationship wise or sexually, but who know you as a friend and they can just speak to like really give you like the 100 about you and just be honest and be like, girl, you tripping. Like, this is what you're doing. And you might not want to hear it. Like me and my best friend, we laugh all the time because y'all know the bitter track is like Cardi and Summer Walker mm -hmm. where Cardi is like, hey, Summer Walker. And she like <laughs> reads her down. So me and my best friend, like when we're about to read each other down about our feelings, we be like, hey, Summer Walker. Because like, girl, you have to be aware of what you're doing and how it's affecting the people that are trying to pursue you. Mm -hmm. Because all of us like, most people want to be in a relationship. Most people not want to be married, but most people want somebody. They want to feel that affection. They want to share it with somebody. And your friends can tell you your toxic traits and how they're going to display to other people before that person gets to experience those. So I think it's just all about knowing the people in your circle and having people around you who are going to correct you as your friend and not let you just be out here doing bullshit. Well, to that point, are you, are you willing and ready to hear about your toxic traits? Yes. Because mm -hmm. I'm too old to be out here acting toxic. I need to, like, I I want my friends as well as whoever I'm dating to be able to tell me, like, hey, what are you doing? Like, this ain't cool. This hurts my feelings. Like, be open and honest with me because we can, we can move a lot of things if we are open and honest. But if we're not open and honest, it's like, now I got a toxic trait that bothers you, but you don't tell me, so I don't know it bothers you. And now I don't even know. I don't even know that you feel some type of way about it because you won't say it. Be direct. We've talked about this a billion times about men being direct. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. And in friendships, be direct with people. Tell people what they're doing. Tell people how you feel or how they're making you feel because a lot of times we're not aware of how we make other people feel. Although, like, that may not be our intention, we can't control their feelings. We can't invalidate them. So and be look, honest with me. Tell me. Openers, it is not enough to say that I'm a Sagittarius and this is just how I am. Don't do that. At all. You can't blame your toxic situations on Zodiac signs. We're too old. <laughs> I hate that. I'll never date an Aries because, girl, I, shut the fuck that up. That pisses me off. Oh, you're a cancer. Okay, my question is, who, what cancer hurt you? That, and at some point, you have to realize <laughs> that it's not every other cancer. It might be you. Like, it's not every other person. Like, you have to look at yourself and do some introspection. Like, it's not just everybody else that's a fool. Everybody else is crazy. Everybody else is toxic. Everybody else is playing. No, girl, you're the common denominator. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so saying that, how many relationships have you ruined? Who, me? <laughs> Ooh, girl. As mentioned, I'm an angel dipped in chocolate. Nothing goes wrong. No, um, I would say in my younger years, I feel like I've ruined a lot of stuff. Mm. Because, and this is just me being honest, I think that in my younger years, I you can ask all my friends, you can ask my parents, you can ask my siblings. I did not want to be married. I did not want to be tied down to nobody. I didn't want to buy no house. I didn't want a dog. I didn't want no kids. I didn't want a white picket fence. I didn't want none of that shit. I wanted to be... A high boy all my life. That's what I wanted. So I had a problem, like, severing connections with people. Mm -hmm. So, like, say me and Mark are dating, but I've been texting Solomon. Like, I wouldn't let go of texting Solomon. Like, that would just be my thing. And that's how I would ruin a lot of shit when I was younger. Now that I'm, like, I say when I got to, like, 27, that's when that stopped. Um, but now I feel like a lot of times I'm very, I'm learning to, I'm learning that it's okay to feel and it's okay to be soft. Mm. So, like, it's okay for me to have my feelings hurt and, like, tell the person and not have to, like, go and try to find a new man to talk to because my feelings are hurt by this person. I'm at a point that, like, I know what I want. I know I want to be married. I know I want kill kids. I want all that. And I can't continue to operate like a city girl, mm -hmm. a raw-ass whore, whatever the fuck they're calling a stupid album. Um, I can't continue to operate like that if I want to be married like Fantasia had this interview she was like they was like why don't you sing bittersweet and when I see you and I she was like interview. do you have a do you have a husband and she was like no and she was like and you keep singing them songs you won't have one so you have to learn to like when it's okay to turn the page and be like okay this is who I used to be and I have to realize that's who I used to be but I gotta go to the next step mm -hmm. so now I can say that there are few and far between there's probably things that I do but in my mind I'm doing a lot better than what I used to do when I was younger okay. how many relationships have you ruined well, no we're going to Marcos uh -uh. Um, <laughs> three that come to mind um, just not being open and like trusting one individual another one um, not letting my guard down and then the third one um, just being self-centered and not willing to grow um, 
But I've learned from all them and noticing, like, yes, I can have those traits, but, like, you have to also be willing to grow along your journey of success. Like, Marco, like, yeah, you can argue with somebody, but you can't always, always think that it's always about you. Like, I was thinking about when y'all was talking, like, it's not that I don't want to talk to the individual. I just don't want to talk about that instance. I like to just walk and like even if the individual was just walking with me down the street at the park or whatever and be like so I know you're upset but this is why I'm angry I'll probably shut the hell up get me together as I mentioned before you need to learn how to get me together and you need to listen right now okay I'm gonna listen what's going on and like I might not be able to respond but give me a few days to understand and then we can talk about it in a few days and I can tell you where I was frustrated and then we could, you know, take another trip and go out to eat. As much I was like digging into you, I understand that. Mm-hmm. So I would say relationship wise, I want to talk about it right then and there. But like professional shit, professionally wise, like mm-hmm. when I'm at work and stuff, if something pisses me off, I don't want to talk about it right then and there because I'm like, I need to digest this. I need to understand. So I get where you're at with that. Like you have to sometimes like wrap your mind around thoughts. And I like to take notes and everything because I want to make sure that I'm not forgetting nothing. When I decide to tear your ass up. So I'm kind of the same way. So mm-hmm. for me, initially, I'm trying to figure out how I'm in the wrong. Mm-hmm. Or I'm, or maybe I'm trying to justify how I'm in the right. Um, <laughs> 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 that's what I'm trying to understand. Um, but then I, I really do, in the moment, want to have a conversation about, like, what is frustrating you in this moment? Mm-hmm. And how can, how can I or how can we fix it? Because I think that's important for me. Um, like, I don't want you to walk away angry. This, look, life is too short. And yeah. when someone walks away, like, I want to make sure that they walk away in satisfied with the experience that we're having. And so if you're satisfied with the conversation, great. But if you walk away and um, there's unsettled business between us and then something happens, I don't want to have to say, I wish I had said mm-hmm. such yeah. and such. Um, so that's, that's just important to me. Um, but to answer your question, since you brought it back on me, um, maybe 90%. You've ruined 90% of relationships? <laughs> of my own relationships, not other people's <laughs> relationships. <laughs> but, so, think about, I, I think about this when I answer this question. Because I didn't necessarily come out, right, um, yeah. until I was like 35, 37. So I came out later in life, and... I think one of the biggest problems for me in my previous relationships is that I, was, I wasn't my, my whole authentic self. Mm-hmm. And so not being my whole authentic self, I didn't necessarily show up in the relationships that I, in the way that I wanted to. That's good. And then in my later relationships, I was transitioning. So like I was learning how to be out in these relationships and I was learning how to be comfortable in these relationships. And even that wasn't necessarily comfortable. Um, because it was it was it was a trial and error kind of space. Marco, where'd you go? What did, what just happened? Oh no, I'm here. <laughs> okay. Um, oops. <laughs> let, me, let me bring that back in. But anyway, so <laughs> I just went into work mode. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Listen, because I was like, let me step out the room. One on one. And so, um, like, I have to be very conscious about that because now in the space that I'm in where I say that I'm ready, I also have to act like I'm ready, Oof. right? Mm-hmm. I have to do the, the things, I have to do all the things. Yeah. And that can be very difficult from time to time. And so um, I also keep this in mind, like even a healthy person could be toxic to someone who isn't doing their work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I have met some people who have been extremely healthy, extremely authentic, extremely like them to their core but because i was who i was at that time we just didn't mesh and so i think it's important that we as and this has kind of turned the page i think it's important that we as black gay males display each other grace in Mm -hmm. relationships not saying let people walk all over you or let people just do whatever they want but there's like this quote on Twitter. I'll be scrolling too much. But there's this quote like um, it says like, dear black boy, loving another black boy, be patient because they don't teach this kind of love. Mm. Because so many of us, like the experiences that we're having in our late 20s or in our 30s, our straight counterparts have already experienced this. Right. So 
I think it's important that we just always lace everything that we're doing when we're going into relationships, our words, our actions, like just lace those with love because mm -hmm. and grace because a lot of times it might be somebody else's first time. Like you may have done this a billion times, but they may not have never done this. Like right. Solomon just said you were in your late 20s by the time you came out. You know 30s. what I mean? Late 30s. Yeah. So, right. So yeah. there are some people who came out when they were 21 and they didn't been married and divorced and everything else. Or our straight counterparts, they were leaving college and like, yeah, I'm finna marry this girl that like down, down the hall. Like, we know college people that are straight that have been married, divorced, have kids. They're doing all this stuff. And then we're gay and we're like, okay, well, this is like my first date where I'm going. I'm like holding a nigga hand in the middle of the street. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, like, lace all that with love and display each other grace as you're out here, like, exploring your toxic traits and getting to know other people and figuring out how you're going to spend your life with somebody, if that. I like it. Yes. All right, Shazam. Okay, so left on red. Y'all know this is Rodney's segment, Chayout. So the way you can submit to this is you can go to our website, click the link. I'm sure it's displaying below me. Y'all know this is not my segment. Hopefully it's right here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or you can send us an email at openrelationshippodcast at gmail.com. So this is where we give advice. You can submit situations. You can submit the let your letter and just li literally let us know what you're thinking. So... <clears throat> The letter. <laughs> <laughs> My partner doesn't want to be in an open relationship anymore. However, when we first met, this was our agreement before we were married. Lord have mercy. Ooh. The truth is, the sex I receive from him doesn't satisfy my needs, but everything else is perfect. Now I feel like he is reneging on our agreement. What should I do? <sighs> what are your thoughts? I think he was talking to you, Marco. <laughs> um, <laughs> who? Um, <laughs> my partner doesn't want to be in an open relationship anymore. So it sounds like he wants to be monogamous and it's only you two. Um, that's his prerogative. But if so, for me, sex is important to me in a relationship. Um, so if the sex is not hidden and I'm not satisfied that way, um, we kind of have nothing. Oh, um, <laughs> no, my God, today not nothing. Oh, not okay. nothing. I mean, okay, <laughs> open up. Not nothing, but like, sex is very important to me. Like, stimulate my mind and then stimulate my body. Number two, like, I in this situation, <laughs> I would probably Divorce. choose me. Yeah, I would probably choose me. Like, and this is. A, Crazy. It's about you? Yes, yeah, self-centered. But, like... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like... The sex is not hidden. Like, I don't know. I just... I like what I like. And if the sex is not hidden, I, I can't fake sex. So, I would just give him what he wants. And we're just not together. <laughs> and you can go find somebody that wants to be monogamous. Because, on the flip end, the sex is not hidden for me. So... You don't want to see other people, and I don't want to see you. So, there oh we are. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <laughs> and I don't want to see you. <laughs> oh, oh, for me. That, is, that was perfect transition into toxic traits. Right. That is perfect into self-centered. And I don't want to see you. <laughs> uh, I mean, be open and honest. Like They're married, Marco. Yeah. He doesn't want to be in an open relationship <laughs> and the sex is not hidden. So I want to be in an open relationship. But everything else is perfect. Perfect. <sighs> you can also pull a Will and Jada just be separated and oh do your God. own thing. <laughs> I'm sick we'll of talking talk, about the ass. We'll talk about it because I... Never mind. Yeah. There, there are ways around it. But for me, I just... We're going to have so many conversations and if we come to some type of agreement, maybe, but... From what this letter says, he doesn't want to be in an open relationship anymore, and the sex is not hitting. We should have had a Will and Jada's ass on the docket today. But um, nonetheless, I would say for me, I always think this is a slippery slope. I talk about this all the time, and I think we see it very, it's very common amongst the gays. People will get together and be in an open relationship, and three years down the road, somebody is like, mm-mm, I want to be monogamous. Mm -hmm. And it's like, look, girl, you already opened the door, and you didn't open a side door, you opened the garage door. Mm -hmm. And now, what you gonna do? So, my recommendation, um, first, if you're saying, like, the truth is, the sex I receive from him doesn't satisfy my needs, but everything else is perfect, 
I'm a firm believer that you can teach somebody how to do what you want them to do sexually. Now, that's just from my experience. I feel like I can, if I like you and I love you and everything else is perfect and you give me butterflies, I can teach you how to have sex. That's easy. Like, that is so easy. Mm -hmm. But it seems to me that there's other things because it can't. you can't tell me that you've been married and the only thing that's bad is the sex and now you're like, I just want to fuck other people. To me, that's a little... Um, it's a little strange because it seems like you never want like you never if you never like their sex. Why did you invoke them in this way? Mm -hmm. If sex is so important to you, why did you go down this? I'm going to keep going. I'm going to get married to you, even though the sex is not good. But I know we're in an open relationship. You're putting stipulations on your marriage already. And you mm -hmm. shouldn't walk to the altar with all these ultimatums like I'll marry you if we're in an open relationship. I'll marry you. Like you should have made sure all this was tied up before you even got to the altar, baby. Mm -hmm. So now it's like one. Y'all might need a little bit of counseling if y'all want to work this out. But in my mind, it doesn't seem like you want to work it out because you're like he's reneging on our agreement about an open relationship. So I feel like it's best that you probably just end it. Like there's I don't think there's any saving it because you're so, you're putting all this value on. He doesn't satisfy me sexually. You knew that when you married him, whenever you guys got married, that he didn't satisfy you sexually. And now you're calling it out because he wants to close the relationship. I don't know. It's, to me, I feel like you should just go ahead and end it. It's probably going to hurt the other boy's feelings. But at this point, you're going to save him the embarrassment and more hurting his feelings and breaking his heart if you continue to try to, like, have this open relationship where now he sees you're cheating on him and it's not an open relationship because that's not what he wants. Correct. While we're talking about hurting people's feelings, um, does, does your partner know that they don't satisfy you sexually. Mm. I think that is important because um, like if you know that from the jump and then you go into an open relationship, I can understand that agreement, mm -hmm. right? Um, but if you're thinking that, you know, you're, you're putting it down, you're doing everything that you're supposed to do and you have this open relationship, then, yeah. So my thing is like, number one, are you, are you honest? Are you open and honest in your relationship? Number two, I want to know what would cha what changed. So if we had this agreement and we got married, we we had this agreement, right? We were in an open relationship and we got married. I want to know what changed. And so I think it's just a conversation. And at the same time, um, if in any of that nothing is resolved, I think it may be. Uh, I I think separating is a viable option i think it i think it has to be because at the end of the day i think you have to be honest with the fact that you might have settled mm -hmm. and if you settled into something that you don't necessarily want yes there may be some great things over here and there's this thing that doesn't work um is it possible for you to go back out in the streets and find what you want Child of his open, I'm sure he'll find something. And so, but the thing is, like, do you want to do that? Do you want to go back out in the streets after being married and do all of that? And I think that's just, that's just a, I think people have to be realistic. Like, mm -hmm. that's a question you have to ask. Like, do you want to be back out there? I also want to put a flip on it. So, you say open relationship, and I don't know the stipulations of your guys' open relationships. They so have sex with other people. But is it like we go play separately or do we invite somebody in our bed? Because we can go, oh, you do your thing, I do my thing, and everything in our household is still good. Or everything is in our household good, I don't want to have sex with you, but let's invite somebody into our home. And have it's sex. given that he, everything in the house, house, house in the bedroom is not good, and that's why he wants to have sex with other people. That's what it sounded like. He said the truth is the sex I received from him doesn't satisfy me. So I'm assuming that the sex that you're getting specifically from him doesn't satisfy you and be, that's why you want to be in an open relationship and have sex with other people and the oh. other man does not want to. He does not want to invite nobody in. He don't want, like, he want to cut it off, which that's his, that's it, that's his right, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They're both operating in their own right, but I think Solomon hit on something very, like, strong. Like, you have to have the, you have to have the conversation. It sounds like there's a lot of communication and some things that have been missed while y'all was in the honeymoon phase, unfortunately. Right. Because how did you get this far, get married and all this, and now you're just now discussing what happens? I think a lot of times about being in a relationship, you have to really think about 
your trajectory and where you're going with somebody. That's important, especially if you're gonna you're getting married. You have you had thoughts that you want to spend your life with this person, mm -hmm. and it never crossed your mind. What happens when we don't want to have sex with other people? I never talked about that. So it sounds like there's some communication issues and bigger issues that have to be addressed. But I think, and you know, lastly, I think it I think it's a matter of like you know when you're with someone for a long time, mm -hmm. thoughts and opinions and desires and attraction changes. And so, like, I'm thinking about being the husband, right? Being mm -hmm. the other person. And the, monog the one that monogamy or the open one? The one who wants monogamy. Okay. I've been with you for however long. And now I see you and I only want to be with you. And so, so that's why I asked that question, like, what's changed? And so, like, if I'm the other person and, like, the only person that I really get turned on by is you... But we're not talking about that. Mm. That's a heart wrenching that, discussion, yeah. isn't it? Hopefully, they have it because that that yeah, I understand that the person who wants an open relationship wrote this, but my heart goes out to the person who wants monogamy. Me as a person, I want monogamy. So for me, I'm probably answering this question from the other person's point of view because I can imagine how they feel. Just like Solomon said, all I desire is you. I want to be with you, mm -hmm. and you're telling me that you want to go out here and fuck these whores. <laughs> Now I have to burn your house down like Lisa left I Lopez. But anyways, Solomon, thanks for your advice. <laughs> Marco, thanks for yours. Hopefully, opener, hopefully we helped yeah. you. Hopefully, hopefully you have some advice and some steps from there. Solomon, girl, take us out. And give us an update, too. I would like to. You know. Okay. Send us so your picture. Let me just say. We don't be giving advice. We don't be helping nobody. Uh, <laughs> I don't think we be helping anybody. Speak for yourself. But <laughs> help this comes from the heart, okay? <laughs> but let me just say that the letter is definitely our fifth seat. Our fifth seat. Um, so we definitely have an open relationship where we have people coming in and they share their experiences. And so we love y'all for that. And on that note, thank you for coming and joining the three of us, four of us in spirit, as we swallow hard topics and spit difference of opinions.